be strong. All right, welcome back to the blog. Thank you for checking it out. Um, in this session, one of the things I'm going to talk about is I get this question a lot from people of all backgrounds, especially new teachers who are going out to the field. I have the job. Now, what do I do? Um, I've had this conversation time and time again. A lot of student teachers ask this job, uh, question even before they actually get the job. It's like there's a lot of anxiety going from student teacher to teacher. So i um, just going to share my thoughts on this in the next few slides. First off, if you have the job, you just were offered the job, whether it's your first job or whether you're transferring jobs, congrats, you rock. I've been on <clears throat> several interviews, um, had offers, and um, I've been at my current job for 13 years, but I understand the process of how draining interviews can be and that anxiety of getting into a new space. Um, so congrats, let me get in line saying congrats if you have a new job. Um, if you are a student teacher and you're about to be out in the field, just stay patient, stay confident, your time is gonna come. And I am confident that your teacher preparation program is preparing you to be successful. Just keep your eyes and your mind open and, and I think you'll be successful in that process. So basically in my opinion and from my perspective, there's two types of jobs and it really runs on a spectrum, if you think of it in a straight line, the two type of jobs that you would get in the music or band world. Now, forgive me, if I say band, it's because I am a band director, but this equally applies to choral directors, orchestra directors, non-traditional ensemble directors, whatever position you're in, even general music teachers. But for the sake of this conversation, I'm speaking from the perspective of being a 13 year band director. So there's two types of jobs, basically. You will have a rebuild or a create program where basically the program for whatever reason has fallen off and it's not what it used to be and it needs some retooling. Or you may be in a situation where you have to create a program. There was no band program there. So your job is to establish it. And then you have the sustain and or elevate program, whereas you had a program that has a lot of recognition. Um, so your job now is just to sustain it and not let it fall off. Or the program is right there in the process of about to break through to be a very prominent program. And your job is to take it from elevate to a, another level. So you have to elevate the level. If you think about it, um, it, it, it can kind of move on a continuum straight across where you have create on this far end, you have rebuild in the middle, you have an elevate right here and then you have a sustain. I probably could um, put that visually in, but my brain didn't think of it till just then. So I just threw it in there. Um, for me, my first gig was a definite rebuild. The program, when I took over the program, had five students who identified as band students. Um, two are in ninth grade, one was two are in seventh grade and one was in eighth grade, I believe. If you look at this picture right there, took a second to come up. I have the faces highlighted of my first five band students. So I take that back. He was in eighth grade, ninth grade, ninth grade, eighth grade, and they was in seventh grade. So these was my day one people that I identified. This picture is actually my second year of um, how much the program grew in my second year from year one to year two. So for my first year, when I started with five, my second year, we got up to 32. My third year, we got up to 52. My fourth year, we got up to 68. Then we dropped back down to 52, my fifth year. And since my sixth year, we've been in the low 40s to low 50, mid 40s to low 50s. Now you're looking at these numbers, you're like, huh, what size band is this? Well, at my school, we only have 220 students from grades seven through 12. Um, so when you look at these numbers, we're hitting above the, the landmark 10% of band students in, in, in our program consistently. We're actually hitting around 20, 25%, depending on the year. Um, I typically start my own kids in uh, sixth grade. So I am my own feeder program. And historically, over the course of my 13 years, we've only had maybe an elementary music teacher for about maybe four of those years. And I do notice a difference. I do get a lot of help from the university, Auburn University that is, where they send a lot of student teachers and they do Friday music lessons. They do an after school orchestra program. And I found that that makes a world of difference once they get to me in sixth grade. So 
What are the steps? Now, if I'm being transparent, many of these steps are from the perspective of the rebuild. Now, you can take these steps and apply them anywhere across the board because I, I think they're applicable in any situation. But in my situation, I'm speaking specifically from where I believe I'm the expert in, and that is from the situation of the rebuild or even the create. But however, these steps can apply regardless of your situation, all right? So step number one, figure out what the situation is. Um, is it a creating situation? Is it a rebuild? Is it elevator? Is it sustain? I had a luxury of student teaching at the school that I ended up getting the job at prior to getting the job. So I knew the situation at the school. I knew the, where, where the program stood. And I've also heard about the reputation of the program. So I was very familiar with my situation. So it gave me a good um, idea of what I needed to do. Um, so figure out what the situation is. You don't wanna be in a situation where you're having to create and rebuild, but you're processing how you're gonna get ones at MPA that year or your state assessment. You may not have a band to do that. You may not have a band where that's the expectation of your stakeholders. So you really have to figure out where you are and who your students are. Very important, figure out who your students are and what your program is, and then take the program to where you want it to be. The next step is establish the goal with your stakeholders. I established early with the principal that this was a one year rebuild situation. My interview was in June and his expectation in the interview that once I had the interview that I would have a band on the field for the first football game at the end of August, not logical. I, I did not have the bodies. I did not know what I was doing at the time. And I hate to say that aloud, but a first year teacher, um, there's a lot to process to guarantee him that I would have a ban on the field by the first game to me was not realistic. So one of the things that I told him is be patient with me, give me at least a year to prove myself. I promise you where we were now, where we are right now will be a totally different thing to where we will be come next May. But you have to give me that time to build and move the program in the direction that I feel it needs to go. That was key in him and I building a rapport. And from there, it trickled down to everybody. Uh, the rest of the administration knew, the counselor knew, the students knew, the parents knew, the boosters knew. And we were able to have that conversation simply because I established the expectation and the goal with my principal stakeholder. The next step is gathering info. And you wanna see what you have in terms of instruments and you wanna see what you have in terms of people. Now, it doesn't matter which order you do it in, but I do suggest that you get this done prior to moving after you set your goals with your stakeholder or stakeholders. Um, your inventory of people and instruments give you an intel on what you need and also the program status. If you go and you go through your instrument inventory and you see no instruments, <laughs> then you know that you don't have any instruments. So this may be a situation that, you know, every student um, is providing their own instrument and you have to go and begin to meet with um, instrument rental places or vendors for instruments. If you see a ton of instruments and, you know, let's imagine if I walked into the instrument room and I saw 200 instruments and I know there's only 200 people in the school, that tells me that the school probably provides instruments and I am responsible for maintaining and keeping and so on and so forth. So you wanna take an inventory of instruments and then also you wanna take an inventory of people. How this happens is you need to sit down with your counselor who is a very, another very, very important person um, and stakeholder in the whole process. If you become best friends with your counselor, it will always keep your program on track. Um, one of the things that I've noticed with my program my program took a turn about nine years in to my tenure there. Although I had always had a great relationship with my counselor, on um, my ninth year, we got a new counselor in it. And for the first time, I was able to have all my band students during the day. It completely changed the face of my program and the things that I was able to do. And it saved me as a teacher because now I didn't have to do everything after school. So you want to get with your counselor, 
see who was in band, see who took band last year, get the names and phone numbers for every student so you can call and, and get in contact with them and introduce yourself and let them know that you're here and you're, you're excited to meet them and you're excited to work with them. So this info gathering process is very key to laying down the foundation of where you would go, okay? You wanna check for your instrument inventory and then you wanna also do an inventory of people. The other thing that you may wanna do is, and I believe it's on the next slide, is aggressively pursue your theater. If you have a theater school, doing an inventory with the band director down there will also help you to bridge the gap. My number one thing that I tell people the number one thing that I tell people who are entering a rebuild and a create situation is build young. Although it is, it is a great opportunity to walk in with 20, 30, 40 band students who have experience, everybody may not buy in. Everybody may not need to be there. You may have some apples that have been rotten that don't fit the direction of where you're going. And I hate to speak to people of people that way, but you just have to really be honest with the situation. And me personally, I would rather have a core of young students that are a part of my rebuild than to gather students that aren't on board with the direction I'm trying to go. Now, I believe music education is for all. I will go after those students that have been there rigor very rigorously, get them. Because if, you know, if I believe every student deserves music, then they need to be there. However, you have to be open enough to know that everybody can't go to where you're trying to go. And you know, as a music educator, that's one of the things in this particular context of building a band program. I look at building a band program similar to building a record label, similar to building a sports team. You need the right personalities um, in and around in a rebuild situation. Kind of tough when you look at my core philosophy that music education is for all, but this is the, the fact. Everybody can't go. Everybody's not going to be bought into the direction that you're going in if we're talking about specifically building a band or building a choir or building an orchestra. Okay, so my advice to anybody is build young, get as many young people in as you possibly mold them into the, to, to the structure and the musicians that you want in the um, program. As I'm talking through this, this feels very controversial to me because it feels very elitist as I say it, but hopefully you understand what I'm saying in this slide as far as building young and focusing on the ones that are extremely interested and excited to be there. Um, the third step is meet with parents and students. No music, just meet. That was one of the things that I wanted to point out at the beginning of the presentation. Um, although our job is to be music educators, get to know the people. Let the people know who you are. I, I honestly believe the key to building a successful program is selling the people that will follow you, your students, your band students, choir students, on you as a music educator. If they're bought into you as an educator and they have a rapport, your program is limitless. There's, there's, there's basically nothing you can't accomplish because your parents, your students, the people you serve are bought into what you're selling, what you're bringing to the table. So after you've taken your inventory, after you have um, set the expectations with your stakeholders, meet the parents and students in a very formal, excuse me, in a very informal way have a meeting have one-on-one -on -one interviews whatever it takes to let them be one of the first things that my principal told me um at the time was when you take this job you have to go to every church in the community and you have to go out and meet the people and um to his advice i did there were about four or five churches in the community that i physically went and i stepped my foot into now where are the places and the hubs in your community that you may need to go to those are things that you have to identify who are the people that you need to connect with for me it was the band boosters we had a very strong band booster program at the time and i had to sit down with them so my third step was inventory of people and instruments and then meeting the band boosters they are my stakeholders they are the ones that are invested in my success as a band program Okay, so these were the steps. Um, again, if you like to contact, please visit the musicedblog.com. Music and education, will you come for the music and leave for the education? If you are watching this on YouTube, 
like, share, and subscribe below. And I'm out. Peace. Be strong. Be strong. Oh, 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 oh,